this is Alan Nassib with another quick tutorial of an interesting case of a combined retrograde and orthograde uh, filling of an anterior tooth number 7 with a um, large periapical lesion. Now this patient uh, was referred to me for uh, treatment of the uh, large radiolucency at the apex of tooth number 7. Clearly there is a poor uh, coronal restoration, the crown is leaking, there was a poor endodontic therapy that was done um, overseas in this tooth and uh, there's a large area of the apex that is untreated. There's a large radiolucency, appears to be cystic. However, as we all know, it's very difficult to tell radiographically whether a lesion is a cyst or a granuloma. Uh, studies have shown that after a certain size, the incidence of a cyst over a granuloma increases. Uh, however, in this case, um, I was my first option was to retreat this tooth conventionally uh, through the crown, and a new crown was recommended to the patient. However, due to uh, financial restraints, the patient was unable at the time that I was making the recommendation to have this tooth treated um, with a complete retreatment and a new crown. And here shows another angle. As you can see, it's a quite a large radiolucency. The borders are well defined. And uh, usually when you see something of this size, you would expect that it would be a through and through lesion, which means that both the buccal and the panel uh, plate, cortical plate, is gone. So um, basically, well, here's another angle as well. What we decided to do was due to the patient's um, um, inability to have the proper treatment done, we decided to treat this surgically, remove the lesion and um, essentially do a retrograde uh, filling of the apex with the understanding that uh, pretty soon the patient was going to have the regular orthograde retreatment and then a new crown. So for emergency measures and because of the fact that the patient uh, had this infection, we ended up having the treatment done first non-surgically -sur uh, with a retrofilling. Now, as you can see, this is the immediate post-op of the case. The retrofilling is done using the endosequence bioceramic uh, root repair material only. Now, my uh, new technique that I've developed, as you have seen in previous tutorials, uh, includes first placing the retrofilling material and then um, the root repair material, and then following that up with a cone of putty. But here, this is, an, uh, is one of the earlier cases I have done where I used to fill the entire retrofilling with the root repair material only without the use of any putty. So um, as a result of that, unfortunately, we ended up trapping a tiny little void in the retrofilling, which it shows here postoperatively. This, as you will see, is not really a problem. Um, it doesn't look nice on the radiograph, but uh, uh, it seems that it did work pretty well, as this is the case six months only, uh, actually about seven months post-op of the case with the retrofilling alone. It's amazing because I normally do not use any um, <clears throat> form of bone filling material following apicoectomies. I find that most endodontic lesions are basically uh, four or five wall um, defects and and they fill in with bone without any form of um, bone grafting. And this case was not bone grafted. This actually is the patient's bone that has come back uh, about seven months postoperatively. And that's quite remarkable because I did not use neither a membrane nor any form of bone grafting. Although during the surgery, I found that the lingual plate of bone was not uh, resorbed and it was only a buccal uh, plate that was gone 